So firstly, uh, uh, an apology from me. Um, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment, so I sound a lot like Barry White. Um, so maybe some coughing and spluttering as we go, but I'll do my best not to pass it on. Uh, the plates I've got here are a left and a right. Try and arrange them where they are. There we go. The right and the left. Um, plate which sits just here across the wrist. Uh, with this one. There we go. Sits just there across the wrist. What I'm looking for is they go to a point and you want the slimmer point facing forward. But not all of them have this. Some of them are straight. You just have to see which ones you're trying to recreate and the general look of them. Um, but this is the one that I was taught on, so it's the one I tend to use. Uh, but I'm not too fussed about the actual uh, edges of this because I will be trimming it to size and shape as I get going. Now, first thing I do with this is we want to give it a bit of a dish. Um, really, if there's any sort of secret, there's, there's about two or three clever bits in a German gauntlet and the rest is just standard armour practice. I guess you could say in many respects this is. If I put that flat plate on there and bend it round, I won't get a nice articulation, particularly in that way. Uh, it will struggle because my wrist is curved and that's flat, uh, flat, so it just sits on there and wobbles about. Looks awful. Used a lot in films, you see it, and they claim it's dragon armour or some such nonsense. And it's just loads of flat lanes of leather normally, just sort of riveted together at the edge, and they look dreadful. What we need to do on this, on that plane, okay, what we don't want is what we have, which is a flat. What we want is a gentle curve to it. And really that's the secret in all of this armour, if there is such a secret, they're curved. The trouble is, is when you have these lanes on, just a card here ready to go, when you have these lanes on and it's sat there and there, you only end up seeing about that much of the plate. So they look flat. Um, but they're not, they're, they're gently curved uh, on that plane and then obviously on that plane there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop in some curvature across this plate. So we'll do that now really quick, it's not hard, <coughs> excuse me, it's not difficult to do. And then we'll uh, see where we're at. So here we are again with my uh, trusty uh, wooden block uh, that I got from uh, a timber yard. I'll just put these scallops in. We've seen it a few times in the videos. There's three here, uh, a sort of shallowish one I use for lames, slightly deeper one, again for certain lames, a really shallow piece just here, which is almost impossible to see, uh, but trust me, it's in there, a couple of mil down. And what I'm going to use is this thing, uh, this dish, this dish here. So we're just going to put that in, we'll give it a knock. Now what I tend to use is uh, this ball peen, I use it as a hammer because it's nice and round here, it doesn't turn things into bags of marbles. Here's a hammer that I've altered and put a nice curvature on the um, head of there. That'll do it. But even a standard hammer like this will do the trick. You'll just be planishing things out afterwards. So uh, choose your weapons wisely and just give it a, a few taps to start that curvature off. So we're in this groove here and we're just going to tap that down. When you get to the edges here, you're really just looking to tap it almost in the middle there so you get a bit of curvature because that's going to come round the wrist. This is the principal area you want to work and then you just nicely drift it out. And there, I'll try not to edit that out, uh, it depends on the length of the film, but that took about a minute uh, to do just to get to this level and it's more or less there. Just going to give it a quick tidy up and a few more taps and then we're finished uh, with this piece here. It's what kind of baffles me why folk don't do this, um, taking some of the cheaper armours you can get because it takes seconds, I mean it's, it's, it's no amount of time at all.
and there we go bar a little bit of tidying up just to lift out these lumps and bumps that are in there that's the curvature that we want on the plate that way finished with again we've seen this now quite a few times in the videos and I think this is an important part to to sort of stress with this you can see a lot of these tools are used again and again for different jobs um, there isn't the requirement to have a thousand different tools to do um, a thousand different jobs. You can get by with quite a few straightforward tools. And all this is, like I've shown before, is it's a tea steak that I've just put a couple of mil dip into there on all angles. I'm taking this large hammer, this was a, a hammer, I think I got this one for about 75 pence or so um, from a, 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 a car boot sale. All I've done is just round that off nicely. And what I'm going to do is just give this a quick clanish. This will have the added bonus of just smoothing things out nicely. It's a little aggressive at the moment on the amount of curvature I've got, so we just want to smooth it off a touch. There we go. Now I can see, realistically, if I go putting that across a wrist, it's going to hurt quite badly there. But by the time we've pulled those edges down, this will smooth out because it will lift those edges up a bit. So the, it's a bit aggressive there, but I'm not too bothered. And I can always touch it back out again. It's only a couple of knocks with a hammer um, if it is a bit done there. But that's kind of finished now. I mean, we're going to be putting flutes and all sorts of things across this, but I just want it smooth so that when I check the action in a wee bit, we can be sure that it's working nicely. But that's that done. So what I'm going to do is get the other one up to this state as well, and then we'll move on. So what we've done then is we've got these two forms uh, vaguely dished in that plane and a bit in that plane there. And this is going to go over a glove. on that part there. It's where you have the ulna cap that pokes through on a lot of the German stuff. Now I can see I've got a full range of movement there. Now my wrists don't flex very well um, with armour on. That's as far up as I can pull my wrist there. Old injuries from when I was a kid, that sort of business. Um, but you can get people who can bring them right back there and that's almost an indescribable amount of pain for me right now so I won't do it for too long. But you get the idea. So when you make this and you stick it on a space like that, bearing in mind it's going to be on a glove. It's amazing what difference a glove can make to the size of a thing. So put that on there. I'm fine left and right. Absolutely no um, impingement at all by this here. If it was sort of that length, uh, then obviously I'd be in trouble. That's what I'm just checking there. So that goes on there. And there I can feel those two are digging in. So it's just worth remembering that as you press on. So I get asked a few times about patterns and a quick word on them in my experience with patterns is patterns are great insofar as they can get you started but they can lead you down dark alleys really quite quickly. Um, the chap that taught me, Dave at uh, White Rose Armories, um, I've got some of the patterns that he's allowed me to uh, take as he's been teaching me and occasionally I've had to alter them uh, to the way that I work. Um, it's not that there's anything wrong with them at all. Um, they work for Dave absolutely fine, but for the way that I work, I've altered a couple of them a little bit because I work a bit differently to Dave. Um, so when you see patterns, um, they can, like I say, take you down dark alleys because you think, well, I'm hitting it, I'm doing everything this other guy's doing, and it's getting me nowhere near. Use the pattern as an indicator. I, I, I can't get on with having the pattern and everything cut. I'll just work into a disaster quite quickly. I tend to make my way along. So vaguely, there's where we've got to so far. And we'll see how this fits when we put it on. Now, bear in mind, we're going to be dishing this a little bit as well. So as long as it's got the size to go past the edges here and the curvature looks more or less right bearing in mind we can change all this 
and I'm going to want it to be a bit shorter than off the edge of this here because we've said that's a bit long. So you can see how the pattern's changed for me. This pattern was for another chap, but it's good enough to get me started. I'm not working in gold. I don't need to make sure that everything's done to the hundredth of a millimetre uh, in the pattern. I can cut things off as I need to. And I'm going to want that to go about there to fit my wrist. You can see how much extra material there is here. And I'm going to be trimming all this back so that it fits my wrist well. So I wouldn't be a slave to patterns too much. Use them to get going. But they're so easy to do. I mean, there's no secret to this. You can see I've started with a bit of metal. I could have started with a rectangle and then carved it down. Um, I really wouldn't get hung up on patterns. Uh, so, so many folk do. Um, but, you know, maybe that's the way they work. Maybe that's the way they work and it works well for them and it would be a disaster if they followed my advice uh, in that instance. But there you go. So I'm going to cut a couple of these. And I'll cut them to the lines that I draw on them. So they'll be a little bit bigger than this anyway. Um, so I can trim them back. We'll get a couple of those cut. And we'll move on to the next bit real quick. 